Taylor Swift on tour right now. Part of her red tour with Ed Sheeran going across North America. Playing Winnipeg. Actually, the first big show in that brand new stadium down there. I got to sit down with Ed Sheeran before the show. Here's a little uh, bit of our visit. I was nominated for an ARIA. Is Australian and like I've done pretty well in Australia. It's probably better, better than the UK. And I was up against One Direction, and it was just like <laughs> you're just not going to win, are you? No, no way. Although I was at uh, HMV here in Sask here in Regina, and you, your poster is like right beside the One Direction poster now. So that's well, that's positive. You're getting, you're getting close. <laughs> it's like you, then it's Austin Mahone, then it's One Direction. So that's the, killing it. Yeah, man, killing it in the game. <laughs> So it must be kind of weird though, like, cause you, you're the guy that you, you got where you are because obviously what you do, not cause somebody made you into something. Mm. So to, to go, all the things that go with it, like all the, I don't know, I, re I saw some gossip stuff the other day, somebody you're dating or something, I don't pay attention to that, but, but what it, like, where's, what's your take on that kind of stuff? Because it, was it very weird that people pretty, care so much about you in that sense or? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's pretty hard to ignore, but it's quite easy to avoid. So, um. Yeah, I'm a very private person. Seems and, like yeah, um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I knew, I knew the kind of pitfalls of America and being involved with such a, yeah. a, a high class musician, I guess. Um, so yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know. I'm, I, I've, I've just been very careful. Mm -hmm. I think. Another important question: uh, Game of Thrones or Walking Dead? I've never watched Walking Dead. Everyone's going on about what? Mm, I've never, yeah. Really? The next one I'm going to watch is Dexter, though. So I'm, uh, Walking Dead's still on the, yeah, Walking Dead's still on the side. But um, Game of Thrones all day, all day long. All the time. You ever think the zombie apocalypse? What do you do? First thing you do after that happens? You ever thought that out in your mind? If the world was to come to that tomorrow, what would be the first thing you would do? Probably go to Walmart and buy a shotgun. Because <laughs> like, in England, in England, you can't have guns, and I find it amazing. That you can buy them at Walmart here? That they're just there, and they're like yeah. two hundred dollars or something. You can just buy something that can kill someone it's a bit it, it's it's a bit scary but um, it is, yeah so yeah i'd never buy one anyway but if zombies came yeah, yeah i'd be rambo for the day <laughs> i'd die but i'd be rambo for the day and it would be awesome right on man now people say that you're like one of the best songwriters obviously you've written with uh, taylor swift and uh, a lot of other people so i thought we'd put it to the test mm -hmm. uh, do you uh, do you recall these no you ever done mad libs no never done mad libs no. all right here's how this works we've had these growing up in canada North America, what you do is you pick words and then you put the words into like a story and you create. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? I get that. Okay, now this one's Interview with a Rock Star, so it's probably appropriate. Cool. Okay? So if you just read it out, am I just gonna. So I'll give words? you like adjective, noun, verb. You give me the words and then you gotta read this back after. Okay. You're a songwriter, so we figure this out. So adjective is something that describes like a noun, like a, like a big. Big, fast, smelly. So what do we got? Large. Large? Okay, large. That's good. Okay, uh, plural noun. So something like uh, things. Two of them. So like chairs, um, dogs. Boobs. Boobs. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, another noun. Another something. Another object. Feet. Feet. Okay. All right. Something that describes something. Like fuzzy, hairy, uh, smelly. Stubbly. St stubbly. Oh, this is gonna be good, I can tell already. <laughs> a place. Winnipeg. Winnipeg? Alright. Two more here. Two more describing words, so like, uh, what you said before was stubbly. Um, yeah, smelly. Smelly, okay. And... Alright. Coarse. Coarse. Oh. Alright, and, uh, three more things. Three more nouns. Name them out to me. Uh, nouns. Um, bin. A bin. A dildo. Okay, that's a good one. And a, a hairnet. A hairnet. Okay. Should I read this to you, or you gonna take it? Yes, please. I got it? You got this? All right. You can read my writing. All right. <clears throat> the famous Johnny Rockstar from the large band, The Boobs, recently gave an exclusive interview to the Feet City Times. Here's how it went. Interviewer, when did you get your first stubbly break? Rockstar, the band just finished playing at a smelly lounge in Winnipeg when a coarse music executive walked up to me and said, Hey kid, you've got the real bin quality. She signed the band to a three dildo deal <laughs> with that record company. We couldn't believe our hair there. Actually, that, yeah, this, that this is good. Sense, yeah. All right. Okay. This is how we got here. This is eight hours of this stuff to get us here. Thank you so much for driving so long, man. Yeah, no, it's good times. <clears throat> so uh, tonight, Winnipeg, 
this is the sold out stadium hey that's uh, it's got to be like nothing you just did the much music video award so that's yeah i mean like, it's all it's always pretty random to play a stadium mm -hmm. starting off in venues that were probably half the size of this room and then play, like stadiums never seem real they yeah. never they kind of seem like you're playing on a yeah. stage and there's a massive screen in front of you and you're just yeah. they never seem real um and then when you get out there it's yeah, the screaming is nuts. Now, you prefer having, came from where you've come from, small venues? Like, would you prefer a pub any day over, over a big no, venue like no. that? And I think, I, I honestly think singer songwriters lie when they say that. I, I just don't think they've done enough, enough, like, it's bad to say that, but yeah. I don't think they've done enough big gigs because I was always like that. I was always like, I love the yeah. intimate gigs, fuck arenas, fuck stadiums. I never want to do that. And I did an yeah. arena, I didn't like it. I was like, yeah, fuck stadiums, fuck arenas. And then, uh, and then I started, I had a run of arenas books and it was the most fun I've ever had, had, had yeah. on stage. There's something about 12,000 people just screaming at you and singing your lyrics and stuff. That just, yeah, that's be weird. Like, you're rushed. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I just think when people say that they prefer intimate venues, obviously I like going back to intimate venues, but yeah, the big, the big ones are fun. I remember Coldplay played Dingwalls in London which is like 700 capacity mm -hmm. and they just played like the Etihad Stadium which is like mm -hmm. 80,000 and everyone was like oh is it nice to do intimate gigs and they were like no we fucking hated it like yeah. going from <clears throat> yeah. a I mean. mass choir singing to like yeah. you know sweat I've right done on. that though I've done yeah. I've done the small gigs I've done the small gigs I've experienced all of that I've done over a thousand gigs in bars and pubs and just shit venues I don't need to do anymore. Like it's nice to go back and, and no, it's cool. And I think it's, you pre you have the appreciation too, because some people skip that step and they go right to like the talent shows and the big stuff, and they don't really appreciate the hours sure. required to sure. get and there. I still do go back. I still do go yeah. go back and do the small ones, but I don't plan them. I'll just be like, oh, I want to do a gig, so I'll turn up at a venue and I'll do it, rather than do like an intimate gig for the sake mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. I know. Cool. And then Taylor Swift, obviously, touring with her is good. Very fun, yeah. Best, you guys are like besties now. It's it's weird, man. It's yeah. weird. Like I never thought I could be like that good friends with a musician that I met through music. Like mm -hmm. all, all my school friends are like my close friends, mm -hmm. and everyone else are like acquaintances. And I think like coming to America and just seeing there's there's a lot of there's a lot of ego in 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 the music industry, yeah. and there's a lot of kind of uh, fake. Uh, chauvinism yeah. I guess and I met her and it was like she had exactly the same views as me on everything and had been successful and has managed to maintain humility throughout it mm -hmm. uh, so that's what kind of first drew me towards her and then just finding out as a person she's you know she's got a wicked sense of humor she's yeah, very, yeah. very family orientated she works very hard and yeah we just we just clicked I, I don't think I don't, we, we don't really go a day without speaking which mm -hmm. is which is cool like it it's helping me through this whole mental process to have someone that's already been through it you know and last question this one came someone tweeted this to me I don't think this is necessarily true but I told him I'd pass it on. Are you worried that when you and Taylor, if you ever stop becoming friends, she will write a song about you? Um, no, because I'm not dating her. So I, I think, <laughs> I, think I, I think that's the um, that's the thing. Like I'm I'm not ever gonna hurt Taylor in the sense that I'm gonna break her heart or something like that. Yeah, like I, I as I said, I have I have my close people mm -hmm. at home, and that's where everything lies that's where my heart lies my mind lies and everything mm -hmm. so in my close circle that's mm -hmm. me and out here so you just got a tattoo you got your with yeah, your family, my family tree, tree yeah. yeah so uh yeah so i'm not i don't think there'll ever be a point where me and taylor fall out because I, like i i remain to be brutally honest with her like yeah. the other day she she was uh trying on outfits for her Rolling Stones performance and she goes mm -hmm. what do you think of this and I told her she looked like a blackjack dealer and although, <laughs> although, although she was very very kind of like hurt at the time like I think I think she appreciates yeah. the honesty so I don't think we'll ever fall out from something like that because we mm -hmm. are very very honest with each other and as I said I'm not going to be like dating her anytime yeah. soon so yeah, <laughs> that's like, what I thought I was like odd question but uh yeah, you never know what it works. Like, it works. Cool. Any more? Like, I, I, you, you, you drove eight hours, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good to answer. Well, we got we got eight minutes. I don't want to. You got to go. We got to get you out the back door. There's a helicopter yeah, coming for fine, you. Like, like, that's, you got, mate, you drove eight hours. You can't just have eight minutes. And that is why that guy right there continues to be one of my favorite artists of all time, Ed Sheeran, nicest guy. And they say don't meet your heroes, but if your hero is Ed Sheeran, you got to meet Ed Sheeran.